The recently experienced floods in Cameroon are still disrupting livelihoods in the region. In the market town of Kuseri in the far north province of Cameroon, close to the border with Chad, homes have been flooded and people are seen walking through knee-high muddy water carrying possessions to try and save them from the floods. I'm in serious trouble. My house is flooded. The family has nearly all left. Things have been removed to a safe place in town. Two regional rivers have their confluence here, the Logon and Chari, and both are seeing exceptionally high water levels that are predicted to rise further. Sandbags were being used in an attempt to contain the river, but for many parts of the Kuseri, it was already too late. The town of Kuseri and the district of the same name has been confronted for a little over a week now by the floodings of the Logon and Chari rivers. Heavy rains caused enormous damage in August, and again the situation has become serious due to the rising flood waters in the region. Dragon trees, cacti flowers and many others are all growing in the same garden 27 kilometers away from Marrakesh, Morocco in the Urika Valley. But the star of this garden is not just nature, it's also art. Flowers, trees and other plants are surrounded by artworks scattered throughout the park. Austrian artist Andre Heller is the mastermind behind this place. I make many gardens in the world since 30, 40 years because I think it's the only thing that becomes more and more and more beautiful every day. And in the times we are living, it is everything that we need. It is beauty, it is spirituality, it is shadow, it is coolness, it is inspiration. In this garden there are no fences, no labels for the artworks or the plants. The objective is to let the visitors walk around freely. Over 8 hectares, the garden houses more than 50 types of trees. More than 50 artworks are displayed in the garden, most are sculptures. The idea of this foreign man who founded this garden in the city of Marrakesh, where he collected a large number of antiques and transformed the garden into an open museum, is a good idea. Because this expresses his obsession and love for archaeological and historical artifacts that have great value. Especially since they were acquired legally. There's a giant head sending a mist of water, a mirror house next to an olive tree, a sheep, a huge eyes hanging in the trees. More than 200 people visit the garden every day, most being foreign tourists. I love the mix of uh, the art and the, and the plants and flowers, trees, just beautiful. Hela began building the garden named Anima in 2008 from scratch. Eight years later, it was born. The lives of hundreds of women could be in danger if the United Nations proceeds with a plan to close the Ming Kaman Reproductive Health Center in South Sudan's Lake State. The lawn facility serves more than 200,000 people, mostly those displaced by the 2013 war and natural disasters such as floods. The UN has said it intends to end the center's operations due to a lack of funding. <laughs> It will be hard for us, so do not close it for us. This hospital has helped a lot. It has helped us a lot, except on occasions where there are no drugs. But when the drugs are available, it's a great facility. With UN funding, the center has helped thousands of mothers have safe births in a country where maternal and infant mortality remains high. Our aims, or our mission, is to reduce maternity, maternal mortality rates. Every woman should deliver severely, every child 
can get her service. So now, if the facility is closed, there will be many deaths outside the community. If it closes, we'll die because we're poor. Some of us have no money or cows. Women who have traditionally had babies in home settings are now coming to the center. There are fears that if the hospital closes, these gains will be lost. Hampered by strong winds, Tanzanian authorities are fighting to stop a fire on the slopes of the famous Mount Kilimanjaro. Park guards and university students joined firemen in an effort to tackle the blaze whose cause has not been established. The fire was burning near the Karanga camp used by climbers ascending the mountain. We were saddened by the news that a Mount Kilimanjaro is on fire again. The source of the fire is still unknown, but we're sure it was caused by human activity, and that can either be due to extraction of honey by the locals or poachers. There is no word on the extent of the fire which comes exactly two years after another blaze in October 2020, which reached across 95 square kilometers. Officials say the current blaze didn't threaten any of the tourists on the mountain. We thank God that no one has been harmed by the fire. All our guests who are on top of the mountain are back down safe. Mount Kilimanjaro, located in the northeast of the country, is Africa's highest summit at 5,895 meters. A plane carrying officials failed to reach the area of the blaze due to strong winds and smoke. Thank <laughs> you.